Oh my god. Hey guys, welcome to today's video. I am going to do my best to not mess up my nail polish as I just painted them very neon. There you go. Oh my God, they're like a neon, like a highlighter. I love this. This is a really horrible idea for me to be filming this video with kind of wet nails. Like, you know when they're like kind of wet, like they're kind of dry, but you know if you like really like use your hands a lot, you're gonna be in the danger zone. We're just gonna do our best to do this video in the danger zone because it's a dangerous video, okay? We're talking about products that suck. We're talking about things that did me wrong, that I do not like, that I would not recommend to my friends, you guys. So we're gonna chat about it all. I always do like to say, if these are items that work for you, there's nothing wrong with that. That just means I am crazy picky and you know, part of what I do is trying so much. And I'm just letting you know, in my opinion, there are better options out there. And I always go through the pros and cons and why I don't like something. So listen close for that. I always, I really do try to be fair, um, but I have like, ugh. I, like I'm looking at this pile in front of me and I'm just like turned off. No, no. I'm gonna be grabbing a lot of products like this. I'm gonna be that girl during this video because nails. This is what is on my nails. Is this not like the brightest thing you've ever seen in your life? I feel like a Kardashian right now. I feel like I really wanna just talk with my hands, be like, let me tell you my products. I like this, I like that, I love this. It's just like, I'm not even looking at myself in the monitor. I'm just looking at how bright my nails are. If they are obnoxious and really hurting your vision, Sorry. This is called Glow Stick from Orly. I picked this up at Sally's. Okay, so let's hop right in. I already picked up one of these guys right here from Laura Mercier. This is a honey bath, and I remember wanting this for like the longest time, and it was on one of Oprah's like favorites, like way back when I was a teenager, and it was one of those um, episodes where like the audience got everything for the holidays. No, I can't! And I just remember looking at this and being like, one day I will have like a nice bath and I will have bath things and I will take a luxurious bath. And this one comes with this little like wooden honeycomb kind of scooper where you kind of dip it in and you put it under the running water and it's supposed to be this fabulous bath time experience. And the bubbles are nice. They're not great to be honest. And it doesn't really super hydrate or anything. And I actually think stinks like i just it does something to like change on me that just kind of smells weird i love fig from laura mercier i love pistache but the honey and any of the almond or sweeter scents for some reason like turn foul on me have any of you guys had this experience please tell me because i think i'm losing my mind i smell it in the jar and i'm just like oh yeah i can totally get into that and I put it on and I smell like a cream cheese bagel. Mm. Angelic. Like it's really bad. It's offensive. It's not enjoyable. And this is so expensive that I'm just like, why? Like who is spending this money on bubble bath? It is soap. Let's talk about this guy right here from MAC. This is the Time Check Lotion. Now this is supposed to be a mattifying primer. I used this a few times and I felt like my skin looked really shiny, which is the opposite of what you hope it will look like using a mattifying primer. Now I was reading the ingredients, I was kind of reading up on this, I was feeling the texture. It's very lightweight, it's not overly thick or like heavy, heavy dimethicone. And I was just like, you know, this might be nice underneath and you know, keeping my T-zone nice and, and good. It just doesn't. You know, MAC does it so well with Fix Plus. They have their, um, what am I really into using? Strobe cream. I love that one. Mix it in with your foundation, use it underneath your foundation. And I just, I took a leap. I was like, hey, maybe this will be like the same thing, but like a little more mattifying, like really, really great and kind of underrated. Um, nope, I just, I don't like it. So this one is a pass. This is a daytime lotion. It is gonna be very illuminating on the skin. And it is, wow, I can smell that from here. Whew, that is rosy. It is very rose scented. Just, I'm in a garden right now that I don't wanna be in.
Tati. I can't. I cannot with rose-scented face stuff. Some people really, really love it. It is not my thing. I don't like it. I don't like rose-scented lipsticks, face sprays, face creams, foundations. Honestly, it just kind of makes me like uncomfortable. So I think this is way too heavily fragranced and a bit irritating on the skin because of that. But also the tackiness of this moisturizer is pretty intense. It didn't moisturize as much as I wanted it to. I kept this upstairs on my sink for quite a while. I thought it was such pretty packaging and I really tried to get over the scent of it, but I couldn't, so we're moving on. So um, you guys know I love so much these two right here, the little pink ribbon, the blue ribbon, these mascaras have been such a game changer for me. I keep them in my purse. I keep them in a travel bag. I keep backups. It is my favorite mascara. I have no relationship with Sally's. I purchased every single tube myself. Um, I just really, really love this mascara. I have never been more impressed. Like I put it on and I'm like, whoa. I don't need lashes. It is that, that good. So my brain is like, well, I need to try every single formulation. Like they have to have more that is even better that I'm missing. So I get kind of crazy and I'll search and search and search. And I found that they had this one right here that I hadn't tried. So this is the Collab Beauty Mascara. It is called High Rise. So this is an intense lengthening mascara. This has kind of a wimpy wand on here. It's just much tinier than the other two. I will show you for comparison. Um, the pink one is my favorite. This is just like the diehard number one favorite. Look how much thicker this wand is. And then the blue one, which is a sculpting and curl encouraging mascara. And both of them, in my opinion, the blue and pink, hold the curl very, very well. This one also has kind of a beefier brush. This one, like I even tried just on the lower lash line for a while, like, well, maybe it's like just perfect for the lower lash. It's not, the formula's good, the brush is terrible, it's a little bit too goopy. There's not enough of a, a suction up top to like clean the bristles completely, so it can be a little dangerous to put on I am just not a fan. Also, I recently tried the Collab Beauty powder. This one is just chalky. Their eyeshadows, their blushes, so good. Like, I mean, next level, amazing good. This right here, whenever I would wear it, I would just feel a little bit heavy. And at first it was one of those things where I tried it out and I'm like, oh my gosh, I love this. It's like the greatest. But the more I wore it, I would look in the mirror and I'd be like, why do my pores look bad? And why do I look dry? Like, this is crazy. Like, what is going on? And I realized it's because I was touching up with this powder and I just don't like it. It's just, and to set the foundation initially, I don't like it on its own. I don't like it. So every which way that I have tried this, I am not a fan of it. Um, I recently also tested out this weird primer. This is called the Backdrop Primer from Smith & Cult. It is a charcoal brightening primer. It comes out dark. That, I don't understand companies sometimes. It's a fine primer, but it will leave this strange teeny tiny gray cast. You know, there are plenty of blurring, mattifying uh, products out there in terms of primers, and this just kind of seemed a little bit like one of those grab you, pull you in, different, kind of like charcoal toothpaste, which my dentist has said is an awful idea to use. So you gotta think a little bit when you're looking at these like wow ingredients that are having a moment, when they start kind of migrating through skincare and into everything from your soaps to your toothpastes, get a little picky, do a little research, figure out exactly what that ingredient is targeted for and if it makes sense for your skin type and your needs. This for me is just a little bit too weird. Like I just don't like the cast that it gives. It says it's a brightening primer. I don't feel like it brightens. I feel like it actually gives this weird slick kind of a thing to the skin and I'm just not a fan of it. So let's just, <laughs> let's stop beating that one up and move right along. This is the Instant Radiance Sun Defense from Dr. Dennis Gross. There are great products within this range. They have a cleanser that is pH balanced that is very, very good for most skin types. If you like simple skincare, um, they have exfoliating wipes that I think work beautifully. This right here is not it. Why are you interrupting me? Oh, I have my own drink slave right now, you guys. Sweet. 
can interrupt me anytime with coffee. Thank you. you. Give me five minutes. I'm about to get way more interesting. Caffeine. Yes. The two times that I wore this, I hated my day because I felt like I looked like a disgusting, greasy, pilly, gross, crunchy, bumpy, wrinkled, rough, disgusting mess. I don't really think I need to say more. This just was not for me. Anything that makes your pores look so bad that you don't wanna leave the house is bad. I could slap myself for this purchase actually, just like, why? Um, so I kept buying more and more brow pencils. This one from Sicily, I was like, oh, maybe I can do like a cute little WTF eyebrow video. How boring would that have been? Let me try out a $70 eyebrow pencil that no one would ever buy anyway. There's nothing that great about this. Let me make it quick. You can really get an Anastasia angled pencil. Yeah, this has like a cute little highlighter moment on here and a spoolie, but beyond that, it's just like, what's special about it? Not a lot. Um, Sicily kills it with some of their skincare foundations. They do have great lip products, but this right here I think is just a giant waste of money. So it is in the no thank you next pile. All right, I have a lip balm. It is called Send Nudes and it has two little butt cheeks on here. This is inappropriate for my family friendly audience. <laughs> Um, this is from Frank Body. Now I love the original Frank Body scrub. It smells like, it smells like coffee. Like you're in the shower and you're just like, my morning espresso. And you get out and your skin is just like tight, fresh, nourished, smooth, hydrated, so many good things. I love the story of their brand and they do a lot of their products right. This one right here, however, is just so thick that it's like a, like you really have to like, it's not, do you see me pressing? Ugh, like barely anything will come out. When you do get it out, it is just like so thick and it smells not as luxurious as the coffee scrub. It kind of smells, <laughs> kind of smells like coffee breath. I drink coffee all of the time. I love coffee. I'm like Seattle girl through and through, but it just does not smell good to me. So yeah, next. I've recently discovered that my favorite hair powder is IGK. That one is the only hair powder that gives you that good fluff without being overly gritty in the sense that the next day you feel like your scalp is itchy or um, it makes it oily or too tacky. Like that one is perfect in my opinion. And it really made me look at other hair powders that I have because I prefer to use a hair powder on day two instead of teasing or just kind of doing other things that would encourage volume at the root because I love the idea of like a lot of volume. You shake it through. It really gives that nice like kind of a thing. Uh, and this one just did not compare at all whatsoever to the IGK. I left my IGK in Seattle. I need to purchase another one because I had a day where I was like, oh, I wanna do some like cute big hair and I had curls and I was like digging through all my hair stuff and I found this and I'm like, this'll work. I used to love this one, this'll be fine. And I put it in and I was just like, it's not doing anything. It's weird when you find these like big time holy grail products and you love them and you rely on them so much to perform the way you know that they will perform. Then you go back to what you were using before that you thought you liked and it's not good anymore. So I guess, wow, I'm having like a revelation here. I guess that's why I get caught in that whole like, maybe there's better, don't be content, maybe there's better. And I'm always trying new, 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 like even with the brows. But at some point you just have to be like satisfied and go with it for a while, I guess is what I'm saying. So if you love love, like it's a 10, if you love love a product, stay there. If you kind of love a product, then maybe play around, try more things until you find that like true love. But yeah, once you find the true love, lock it down and stop messing with 10,000 other options. This was not it. All right, I also have the Pow Wow Powder. I can't stand a dry, highlighter like I just don't want anything to do with it when I'm swatching highlighters in my collection to be like you can stay you need to go pack your bags you can stay I love you 
this kind of a thing makes me insane. And in the past, I would be like, but maybe I could use it as an eyeshadow. And then now I'm just like, no, come on, stop it. You see how it's not like terrible, but it's not great. My version of top notch right now is the Fenty highlighter. I've just been stuck on this. It's a little wild for most people. I kind of got carried away with it today, to be honest, but it just almost looks wet and it sinks into the skin in a way because it's just that like gel with glimmer. It doesn't ever look really chunky. It doesn't exaggerate things that I don't want to exaggerate. And I found that these powders that are kind of in the in-between where they're dry as highlighters just usually don't look very good on the skin. So this is in my no, no, no pile. This was the Pop Beauty Pow Wow Powder. It's out of here. I have talked about this in a try on video. Oh my God, so much fallout. Oh, I hate this eyeshadow so, so much. I, for whatever reason was like, maybe I can make it work. I don't know why I was like dead set on making it work, but I'm getting rid of it. This is the e.l.f. A 90s mood palette. And then I have this from Zoeva. This is another one of those that I was just like, maybe I can make it work. Like maybe we can do this. It's just, it's like kind of waxy. Um, the one that I love so, so much for contour is a pro palette. You'll invest in this, but it is worth every penny. If you're someone that likes to cream contour, I highly recommend something like this. You can actually mix the colors together, match your skin and do really intense concealing. If you have a blemish, if you have discoloration, if you have something that you really need to address to even out uh, the uniform look of your skin. You can achieve that with something like this. You can sculpt out a brow, you can contour, you can highlight, conceal under the eye. You could use this as your full foundation. It's just very, very versatile. So that's why I think something like this is worth the spend. Whereas something like this is just kind of lacking a lot of pigment. And I, I like using something a little more pigmented when it comes to, this is the Zoeva. This is the RCMA. Do we see how much thicker and more pigmented? You need the tiniest amount to get a maximum payoff and you end up looking more natural because of it. So don't be intimidated by a contour that is a little more pigmented. Use less of it, get the area very blended and it will look beautiful. Whereas sometimes with something like this, it can end up looking quite blotchy. So this one is a pass for me. Okay, I also have these guys from Star Skin. This is the Seven Second Morning Mask. It's an all-in-one, I really don't understand what exactly this is. It says massage, exfoliator, toner, moisturizer, serum, mask, makeup, primer. It's an all-in-one. I would put it on and my skin would just kind of feel sticky and I would just get the sensation that I wasn't done and I needed a serum and I needed a moisturizer and I needed a primer. So I used these probably for a couple of weeks. It's very juicy and gloppy and you get in here and it has uh, little exfoliating kind of nubbies on one side and it's smooth on the other So you can definitely like get on the skin in a really nice way like you can do it quickly But I just don't understand how it's all in one. I prefer my routine Where I know what I'm putting on my skin. I know what my skin is getting I'm letting certain items sink in and moving on to the next item and this was just too much of a shortcut and just never felt to me as good as my normal skincare. So it's not about lukewarm. It's about just like fiery, good, will amaze you products. And I'm gonna find those for you guys. I am on a mission. We are doing that this year. So hang with me. We're gonna get there together. And I hope that you come back and watch more videos. Make sure you are subscribed if you have not yet done that and ring the bell. Just please go ahead. Let's all together say it. Let's ring the bell. It's here somewhere below me. Ring the bell. You will be notified of my upcoming uploads. I'm here Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 10 a.m. PST, and we are going to uncover some of the best makeup products this year, and I will continue filling you in along the way on the bad ones, and uh, I always have some tricks up my sleeve as far as fun content. I've been like doing some really cool stuff, so I hope you like this video. Even if it is kind of negative, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. All right, I love you. I will see you guys in my next one. Go have a good one. And thank you so much for hanging out with me. Mwah.